When do people make these decisions? Everyone dressed up last year. It's a conspiracy, I'm telling you. Be cool. Who are you going to call? The nerds! <laughs> <laughs> but I had that experience. I went, there, I went to school wearing an E.T. shirt. And it wasn't this one, but I was 12 years old. <laughs> E.T. on the shirt is like, why are you wearing it? <laughs> we are too old for this. <laughs> I'm going to let everybody know that with uh, with this review that we're about to do, I'm looking forward to doing it, but I might have a little bit of a struggle. might be getting off that short struggle bus doing this because with some of the clips that I have, they're not going to be easy to queue up. I probably shouldn't even be showing them, but you know, it's hard to talk about these things when you're doing a video streaming show and not show some visuals. Sure. And... That is what we're going to try to do here for. Now, it is, it is Halloween tonight, and we've had a whole Halloween weekend here at Double Toasted. Yes. <clears throat> and I figured what better way to cap it off on this Halloween Eve's with the show that has been highly anticipated by everyone for almost a year now, ever since... Them strange things start happening on Netflix. Whoa, oh my God. People have loved it. Strange things was a phenomenal Stranger. Stranger thing. <laughs> At least I'm not saying needful things like I was last night. <laughs> last night I kept telling Walter, I gotta go home and watch needful things. Like, man, you don't want to watch that shit. <laughs> Stranger Things 2. And the first one, it was a small town, like a lot of these movies start out in the 80s. It was a small town where the kids are riding their bikes, playing their Atari 2600s, and minding their own business. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden an alien lands, or a monster attacks, and mm-hmm. our, our dark portal is open. And that's what happened in the last one. And what I admired about the first Stranger Things is that they left a lot open. So I said, as much as I like this show, ooh-wee, I know we're going to get more. Because we ain't solved all the mysteries yet. And maybe that's what they're attempting to do with part two here. And what's the name of the town that they're in? Uh, Dawkins, right? And this yes. is Dawkins, Indiana, right? Mm-hmm. Haw- oh, Hawkins. Hawkins. Oh, look at my man, a Stranger Things fan over there. Yeah, <laughs> no, don't let it no, go. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Correct our dumb asses over here. It was mad too. Hawkins, goddammit. <laughs> you stupid motherfucker. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, that's all right. Yeah, you want an internship, man? <laughs> but, no, Hawkins, Indiana, all oh, for a year. Things have been kind of okay. The kids have gone back. Lucas, Mike, Dustin. Who else? Who's that other one? That, Will. Will. Will Valley out there. <laughs> you, know, they, you know, for the most part, they've gone back to riding their bikes, playing the video games, being friends, doing what friends do. And yet... There's still something lurking in one of those kids. He keeps, he's still on that shit and still <laughs> seeing, <laughs> and still seeing monsters and dark things. And plus, we got what's his name? Uh, Hopper. John Hopper. A uh, Jim Hopper. Jim Hopper. Jim Hopper. He's harboring some secrets himself. You know, ever since Little Eleven, the little telepathic girl. Ever since she's disappeared, and. Uh, People can finally find Legos on our Egos, whatever it is, on the shelves again. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> They're everywhere. Yeah. You know, he's been, uh, everybody's been wondering about her. And he's been kind of mysterious lately. What is going on in this town again that seemed to almost be getting back to normal, but is not quite there? You know, let's go ahead and take a look at a little bit of the trailer for Stranger Things 2. And we'll come back and give you our reviews. done gone crazy again and only them kids can save it and that's what everybody loves about these 80s movies man it was at a time when all the the adults and the parents they don't know what they're doing they're just fucking up everything Mm -hmm. it's not until the kids get on them little bicycles and save the day (laughs) Uh, they save the alien or prove that the creature is really innocent here you know but are any things happening here you know this is not going we're not going to spoil this review as much as we can but you know if you want to go in cold i would recommend i don't want to hear anybody complain as much as we want you to watch the program uh, I don't want anybody to complain if they want to go in completely cold. I mean, we can't talk about this without talking about some things. But we, believe me, there will be surprises you will not see coming with this. So this is a, going to be as much of a spoiler-free review 
as we can do. And as I said, uh, forgive me if I have trouble bringing the clips up. Might have me struggling with that a little bit, but we're going to get through this because I'm eager to, talk, eager to talk about this. Now, I'm, I'm one of the people that thought that uh, the original Stranger Things I liked a lot. I did. I, you know, I, 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 I came close to loving it, but didn't really because I thought that it was probably too steeped in nostalgia, too steeped in the 80s stuff. And it did do kind of what I don't like when people do nostalgic things like, hey, let's just stop and reminisce. Sure. Hey, you remember mm-hmm. the Rubik's Cube? <laughs> Look at this Pinto. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, let's just stop and just reminisce. And, and you know, I, I, the only time I don't like that is when it gets in the way of, of story. And it, and it wasn't too gimmicky here because the, the, the Duffer brothers, I believe, mm-hmm. they love this stuff. So it did come from a place of love. And that's what I like about this. I, you know, whether I like this better than the first one or not, I'll say in a little bit, but I will say that the nostalgia is exactly what made me like this just a little bit better in that area. Really? Yeah, because maybe, just maybe they, uh, maybe they, maybe because they appeal to me because th- so much of what these kids did in this show is what I was doing. I mean, I wasn't doing crazy shit like sitting around drawing <laughs> mysterious drawings and, you know, uh, uh, hallucinating about creatures and mm, monsters. Yeah, you were. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the hell is this? <laughs> your, your creatures was yeah. Jim, Jim Henson's Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all these pictures of Kermit. <laughs> <laughs> drawing Kermit all day. It's a black Kermit. <laughs> <laughs> sitting up there sniffing crushed up sweet tarts. <laughs> Ooh, that's some good shit. <laughs> you know, let me sit back and hallucinate with cat bears and shit. You know, I, no, what I'm talking about is that they were they were doing so many things that I was doing as a kid, man. You know, uh, when uh, when you know when when you go when look when you go to a to an arcade in a in a show or a movie, you already taking me home <laughs> to my childhood. <laughs> when you went home, Alabama. When you in sweet home. <laughs> Sweet Home Alabama, the video game. You know, you if you end up playing Dig Dug and Cubert, I'm home, baby. Oh, y'all, you that goddamn Cubert. Cubert is my boy. <laughs> <laughs> love, I don't give a shit. I love the cartoon. I'm happy for I you. Love, I, had, I had every shitty version of Cubert on any console available at the time. Which is uh, just any version of Cuba. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. If you don't understand, shut your mouth. And you're going to be mad at me for this one because, man, let me tell you something. When one particular video game popped up, I, I was drunk last night. I was watching this. I cheered. I actually stood up and was like, yes. Oh. Yes. I told you that. <laughs> yes, you told you we were throwing a party for Gertz and this last Stranger Things, and the second Dragon's Lair popped up, I said, Coleman is going to lose his shit. Yeah. My, pops my wife and I, we were drunk <laughs> watching this. I had a devil's backbone. That's a drink here that's very high in content. I drank that, and when that, dra- when that princess popped up, I stood up, yes! Dragon's Lair! I remember that shit. That was my game back then. <laughs> Oh, man, it even takes me back to that skeleton when Dirk the Daring, because I was like, I got that screen so many times. And there was a girl at the party who was like, is that a real game? I was like, yes. And if there's another guy that was here heard you say that, he would have choked you out. I would have choked about a- you. <laughs> Silence, let me tell you about Don Bluth. <laughs> did, did you play the cliffhanger game, too? I played all those shitty-ass laser disc games, man. I, uh, was, there, was there more than those two? Oh, that's dra- right. The one, the, the space one. There was Bork. Space there was space Ace. Space Ace. There was Dragon's Lair 2. Oh, there was right. even one, something called Byron's Quest or something. Byron. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Byron's Quest. Uh, so, man, I played all those games at the time. Uh, I would have choked that chick out. I would have propped her ass on a Dragon's Lair machine. <laughs> that ain't a real game. I'm like, yes, it is. Yeah, she would have propped her. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Seen that skeleton looking at her right there. Yeah, you know, uh, you, it, you know, there, there were a lot of things in here where I was doing what these kids were doing at the mm-hmm. time, and it really captured my nostalgia for it, man. Yeah, that's. Um, I think we're going to really agree on that part. I guess being that these kids... I was the same age as them at the time. It made me feel like when I was at when I was this age watching movies with these kids, watching the Goonies, uh, watching watching ET, you know, where uh, and 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 saying, "Wow, I'm these kids now." And that's because I can relate to these kids, man. These kids are, you know, they're great actors. First of all, yeah, mm-hmm. they're they're amazing actors. And the other thing with it is that they're they're nerds, like uh, like like I am, man. I mean, that whole thing when they went to a. Uh, when they showed up and see if I can find it here. When they showed up to uh, 
to school. To school, and yeah. they, they dressed up for Halloween and nobody else did. And yeah. nobody else did. Oh. When, <laughs> when they were... <laughs> When they were dressed up in those those uh those Ghostbusters outfits, and nobody was there, and they looked around them, and they were like, "Holy shit, we uh we really are some nerds, man." I because I, I the, and I'll tell you the reason why, but this is one of the this right here is one of the funniest moments in the movie to me. I I live this moment. When do people make these decisions? Everyone dressed up last year. It's a conspiracy. I'm telling you. Be cool. Who are you gonna call? Nerd. <laughs> Everybody at the party we were said, "Damn, yeah." <laughs> said, "Don't hurt him that bad." And I'm not even lying to you. I that, again, this is why I can relate, and this is why I'm probably more partial to this. So I don't even know if this is just a very, very biased review. But I had that experience. I went there. I went to school wearing an ET shirt, and it wasn't this one. But I was 12 years old and wore an ET shirt. And I swear to God, there's a guy who's a lawyer here in town. I was in sixth grade with Tom Nesbitt. Tom Nesbitt has his oh, own. Oh, really? Tom Nesbitt has his own law practice, man. Yeah. I'm saying this because the guy's the guy's great. But in high school, he was that. He was like, <laughs> I remember looking at me like, ET, way to go, Coleman. <laughs> I was like, man, fuck. You. I, like, I like how ET on the shirt is like, why are you wearing? It? <laughs> we are too old for this. <laughs> They're gonna jump you. <laughs> You're <Ow. I'm> a nerd. <laughs> Come get him. <laughs> <laughs> He's right here. You know the irony is is that today there's some. 30 year old hipster wearing this the exact same shirt. Yep, yep. We bought it at Buffalo Exchange. It was it's my shirt. Paid seventy five dollars. Paid seventy five dollars for, for the exact same shirt that I got made up for for t- being twelve years old. It don't seem so bad. <laughs> the other thing with this is that I love how this uh, was able to uh, to take from a lot of genres and not only like a lot of well I guess some genres but also it was able to take from. From a lot of uh, uh, other movies at the time, like there was, um, you know, you, we all know that they have the Spielberg stuff in there. We all know they have the Stephen King stuff. In fact, mm-hmm. I think that the most of the the over the overarching story here is actually uh, Stephen King's The Mist. You know, when you had mm, oh yeah, you have some comp- some some uh, uh, yeah. facility, some uh, this group of scientists who open up this portal and it's starting to take over the town, mm-hmm. and that is the main story here. Well, but- yeah, it's all kind of the mist meets it meets Firestarter. Well, I like the first season so much of it is homage to mm-hmm. things I've already seen. There wasn't a whole lot plot wise that surprised me. Um, that wasn't the case with this one. There are a few things in here that I was not expecting. At yeah, all. yeah, and you know, and I'm gonna pull up this clip right here because one of the things that I want, damn, I just pulled up the Defenders. I didn't want that shit. Oh, no, no. <laughs> you want to watch this? Hell no. No. Hell no. Uh, one of the things that I want to show you here is, and let me see here. Oh, there you go. That's how I can change this. One of the things that, that I notice here is that <coughs> there, are, there are movies that I like, and a lot of people could say that, you know what? You actually ripped off. Uh, you actually ripped off this movie here. You actually just went in and did it almost scene by scene. And, uh, and the first thing that I saw here is just the theme of that. Let me see if I can find it here. It's, uh, oh, it's the one where, now this isn't exactly a ripoff, but this, and I'll tell you to be patient with me as I pull up these clips. Uh, this isn't exactly a ripoff, it's a theme. And I was, I was happy to see that it was able to bring in different things other than sci-fi and horror. It was able to bring in like some sweet themes I knew as a kid. Like I told you, I love E.T. as a kid. Sure. Mm-hmm. And I think that they kind of did the same thing here. The boy, the, like that very sweet boy and his alien theme. Uh, man, what, no. Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had, what, well, I was going to say that kind of went more of the gremlin. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah, more like gremlin. It's going to it's gonna be nice and then they, no. <laughs> and, there, and there's a sense of dread from the get-go. From, like, from the from get-go. The very yeah. beginning. But even, Something's gonna but, go but you know what? That is a perfect uh, reference right there. It is more gremlins. Mm-hmm. But even gremlins was a take on E.T. where it's like, okay, this is the darker version of a boy and his creature type theme. And that's what, and that is the very Spielberg touch in here. This touches on everything. Every boy who wants, they don't want just a dog. You know, they want... <laughs> anybody can have a dog. Anybody can have a dog. I want a fucking monster. You want to hold him? No. no. He doesn't bite you. Don't worry. Don't don't worry. Want... Oh, God, he's slimy. Oh, he's like a living booger. He's like, yeah, motherfucker, I know you. <laughs> I don't trust you, man. It's a little, if you're listening, it's a little creature that's named, uh, Dustin named him uh, D'Artagnan. They call mm-hmm. him Dart for short. And... And he's uh, 
and it's you know it starts out like it has this bond with Dustin and I you know I thought I like that they put this in here that that Spielberg touch from ET our gremlins and we're able to bring in some other things later uh, and I and I love tell you what I love uh, the, uh, the, that kid Dustin. Uh, I was gonna say I like their reaction to it. Like Justin's like, look at my cute little creature, and he's like, we need to kill this yeah. shit. Yeah. Everyone <laughs> else is like, what the <laughs> yeah. fuck are you doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. like yeah. you know what happened? That was not even a full year ago. Yeah, yeah. And be, <laughs> and be careful with spoilers in here. Well, no, yeah, that's, this is like episode three, so it's not too yeah. far in. But yeah, it, it kind of goes that route where you're like, all right, you just had this big traumatic experience with some foreign creatures that you want to bring another foreign creature into this and our universe. Yeah. You know what? I, I, and I, Dustin is so funny, man. I love it because in this one, he got some teeth now. And he, and he, <laughs> he loves showing them off. He's so, yeah. he, he looking at me and they're like, man, get your ugly ass. <laughs> <laughs> and and he's, he got some top teeth now. If you remember the first one, he didn't have any. He's like, oh man. And he's still sucking in that top lip. Yeah. <laughs> People really don't know no difference. It takes a while to get used to it. Like it, you can you can tell when somebody had braces because yeah. you have to get them off. Their lips are still like this for a while. Yeah, yeah you got that, that that permanent duck 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 uh-huh. mouth for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean he was so cute when he had no teeth. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and now he got teeth like hey baby, mm-hmm. a little pervert, <laughs> a little pervert man. I'm hungry. You got some grits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, but while I'm bringing up uh, an ET reference. I like how it can switch tones quickly. Like at some point, it went in and it turned into. And let me see if I can find it here. Uh, it turned into aliens real quick. I would not put it past them. Yeah, and I'm sitting up here and I'm trying to find the. Uh, I'm finding, trying to find the clip where they actually go in and they have their alien moment. And some people could look at this and really, you could say that. Man, you know, these guys are just no, they're I'm really sure. ripping this off. But they're probably ripping off something that ripped off aliens. No, this is straight up aliens. Right down to even having some of the same cast some, members. Some of the same cast members yeah. and some, some of the same dialogue. All right, stay frosty, boys. Stay frosty is a line straight out of aliens. Is it? Yeah. I'm sorry. He made me do it. And that's almost like the Ripley part. You're like, get him out. Get him out of there, man. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, I want to beat his ass. I think overall, the storytelling is better in this because I think they show you more things that they didn't do in the first one. Like, they show... Uh, you know, it was more of a creature movie and, and uh, you follow Eleven and uh, you follow the, 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 the uh, Gore Dragon or Gorgadon or whatever they had in there. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the Demi Gorgon. The monster they had in there. This one starts to show you more the upside down, uh, mm-hmm. the, you know, the, whatever they call it, the, the upside down. Yeah, upside yeah. down. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that they're exploring that more. You know, it's actually something I want to see more of and they really didn't touch on it a whole lot in the mm-hmm. first one, which was cool that they didn't try to cram too much in and left some of it a mystery. But I think that it's really cool that they're doing that now. Uh, one thing I did like over this one, uh, this one thing I liked about this one over the first one is I felt like the kids felt more distinct here because of that. Mm-hmm. I felt like, like particularly Dustin and Lucas, do we mm-hmm. see them come at odds a lot more? And well, I think in the first season, they kind of felt more like side characters to say funny lines of dialogue here and there. Here they feel a lot more freshed out of like, be fleshed out because yeah. there are a lot more points of conflict between and them. And you actually get to meet their full family. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, yeah, you yeah. meet Dustin's family very early on and then you meet Lucas's family soon after that. I love Lu- uh, Lucas's little sister. He yes. Has a, somebody's <laughs> little sister who acts just like a little sister. Yep, he, yep. Somebody's about to die and they're trying to call for help over walkie-talkie and she's like, I got a call for you. How about shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, it yeah, like, it's oh, reminiscent of what's happening. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I gotta whoop your little ass. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Stealing yeah. her brother's He-Man toys. I love and that making them, And making them have sex with, like, <laughs> yeah. with, 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 our, with our Barbies. And, yeah. yeah, you know, it's uh, and that's another thing that I like with this. If they were able to be kids and they were able to do things like they were able to curse, they were able to drink, they have sex. And I love how they even have some real nasty sexual innuendo in this. But none of it is real. You know, I, I like that they kept it in the PG-13 area. I like that they were able to go in and uh, not have, not try too hard to have these kids be, you know, act like adults. You know, because a lot of times I see in these movies, like the kids are little adults. Mm-hmm. Sure. And, you know, in, in a lot of movies where they should be, uh, you know, they should be kids who don't really have a grasp on cursing or, yeah. or you know, they're not cursing that hard. I thought that's one of the things that they did in It that I thought was, uh, that I thought was kind of... Uh, 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 you know, a little, little too strong. I'm not gonna say that it was bad. Just probably a little too strong. One of the things that I, you know, that's one of the things that I liked here. It even made it a little charming 
when they when they did it here. Like I said, I like Dustin so much. I like when Dustin was uh was was talking shit to that librarian, man. Like he <laughs> Dustin was a pro at that. Sure. You know, he was at, at Dustin didn't give a fuck if he was in front of adults. <laughs> he would curse as much as he wanted to. And he would actually he would actually make it really funny, almost adorable. Books are my paddles. Five at a time. Are you shitting me? Excuse me? <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> thought he was, uh, you know, it's, it's actually cute the way they curse in here. And they were able to have them, like, do things that aren't so, so childlike and so cute, but have, you know, also kept, kept in the realm of someone innocent. And, I, you know, I like that. There are two new characters in this, uh, Billy and his little sister, his little sister, uh, Max, they call her Mad Max. And it's funny because uh, the girl in here, her name is uh, Sadie Sink. And I'm like, what are you, a Willy Wonka character? <laughs> so, you know, but that's, the, that's the actress's name. But I, I like them. I like, I like her. I yeah, think she's. I, like I think she, I like. Uh, she's. What I like about her is that she's really intense. Like you can even see her right here. She's like, say that shit to me again. <laughs> you know, she's. Uh, and she's. It, I like. I like how intense she was, man. Mm -hmm. You know, she's. Uh, that might might be to a fault because there was not too many scenes. You know, a couple of them where she would be. She would uh, lighten up, but most of them was just kind of like you know keep this chick. Well, she has a machine, man. <laughs> you know, kind of what's down. that? She has a major scene of kind of breaking the wall. Yeah, yeah. You know, I know. I, I like. I like her. I like her as an actress. As as many of these uh, these kids in here. I think you were right about uh, the guy that played the uh, the the Billy the 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 uh, the, <laughs> the, 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 the asshole stepbrother the mm -hmm. one if you've seen the new Power Rangers movie you have seen him but he got on one of those uh, those trailer park mullet wigs yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got that got that earring you know that one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who was this thirty year old man in high school yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a grown ass man terrorizing a high school <laughs> he looks like any thirty five year old man in trailer park that hits on every sixteen year old there yeah, yeah. like that Some motherfucker cru shit. yeah he cruises by his Camaro by the the high school every day <laughs> yep seducing teenagers and mothers with equal like yeah, a band yeah, yeah. Like, like, dude, dude. <laughs> and I like and you know and I like him but I, I and I like that actor and I like I like that character just the way he's such an asshole but that's also the problem is that he was I, what i liked about the first stranger things is that bullies kind of switch roles after a while yeah and i didn't get far i have to admit i didn't see episode nine and nine episodes here and i should have admitted uh, admitted that beginning but i you know maybe that's some turnaround or something but he's just he's he's not only is he a bully but he's also the the it's the bully that doesn't change and slowly gets a little crazier as he goes along he's too much He's he's not quite like the bully in it, where you go like, okay, you're a complete psychopath. Well, he, yeah, Nobody he would let right. you live in this town. Yeah, he ain't shanking little boys and right, carving his name right. in them. But for everybody else who has a who, whose characters are layered, even the even the people who are assholes, at some point you kind of go like, all right, you're not just just nothing but bad. But this guy, even when they try to do a backstory on him, and go, you go like, well, see, this is why he's like this. I'm like, yeah. nah. He, he, was, <laughs> yeah. he was a brat then. <laughs> well, speak, I was talking about the, the older kids. What'd you think about the with Steve and everybody else's storyline as well with them? Mm. I, liked, uh, I like Steve. I like Steve. Steve is a, is a likable character now. And I also like some of the new characters that they brought in. Uh, I like... I like the uh, guy that played uh, the, the the conspiracy guy. Oh, not Stanley Tucci. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that how you think of him? As soon as I saw him, I was like, they wanted Stanley Tucci for this role. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I always like this guy and stuff. I never know his yeah. name. His name is Brett Gelman. He okay. plays Murray, the the, the conspiracy guy. Mm -hmm. He's and, good, and he's very good. I like mm -hmm. him in there. Uh, like I said, I like Max as a new character. Uh, you know, there's a and some of the returning characters that I like. Well, I also like uh, Sean Astin, man, who's gone full yeah, dad. Rudy. He, he's yeah. gone full dad mode right here. Yeah. <laughs> like he, you know, this is this is a guy who, you know, he's that embarrassing dad that picks you up after school and you're like, man, dad, get back in the fucking car. But he's you like know? that good dad, so you can't really say much about him. He's like, damn it, he's always there to help me. Fuck. Yeah. 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 And if you don't remember Sean Astin, they're bringing a lot of people in from the '80s, like this, like he's from the Goonies and uh, oh, Rudy, yeah. and you know this. Uh, and even like I said, even brought in Paul Reiser, who's an alien. Who mm -hmm. uh, brings up hints of uh, the character that he was in that movie? Uh, he, he's often that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He walks on screen, just like that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> up to something. Slimy fucking weasel. Like. The yeah, the guy that I that I that I have uh, uh, that I that I think they don't do much with is. Uh, the guy that is uh, what's his name? Jonathan. Jonathan. The cool by, kid. by the way, <laughs> they need to, they need to keep this in PG thirteen there because once he goes rated R, he can't get back into the country. No. This guy just got arrested for <laughs> he got arrested for cocaine. 
Like they won't even let it. Like they told him that you can't come back in this country, man, with that shit. Yeah, he was going to the premiere of this when he got arrested. With his supply. Yeah. Yep. Jesus. He had, he had good plans to see the premiere for this too, man. I'm going to see some stranger things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's funny too because I look at him and I'm like, you can tell he was on some shit before because he's supposed to be a high school student and he's just ghoulish looking, man. Yeah. Yeah, he's got that kind of later Edward Furlong look to him. Yeah. Yeah, that was brought up at the viewing party we had. So oh, really? Someone just like, yeah, it looks like fucking John Connor from T2. <laughs> he looked like Edward Furlong's corpse, man. That yeah. motherfucker looked like he's about to, like, it looked like he just popped out of a crip. Like he's about to tell you a story. <laughs> Doug Edward Furlong on a river. Like, yeah. here he is. Yeah. He's about to tell you a story. Yeah. <laughs> he looked like that. He looks ghoulish. Hello, kitties. <laughs> <laughs> out of all the characters that we have in here i really have enjoyed looking at uh looking at the relationship between uh jim hopper and 11 you know jim hopper's going through a lot of shit in this i mean he's, he's being put through the ringer as he gets deeper in this all while trying to protect 11 too yeah and, although he did something where i was just like that's what you get. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm like, hey, Martin, I don't, I don't know what you were thinking at this moment. <laughs> well, and, you know, you got to, I, I let him slide because, I, no, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I let him slide because, you know, the, and, you know, you, you forget that in the first one, he was, he was going through a lot of grieving. You know, he lost his daughter. Yeah. And 11 is his, uh, who, by the way, that girl, Millie Brown, uh, Millie Bobby Brown, Millie Bobby, Bobby Brown, that's not her right there, but Millie Bobby Brown plays 11 is great. But I thought, I love that whole thing, how the, their relationship developed where they are, you know, uh, that's his surrogate daughter and he's a little overprotective and they don't try to play that up. Like, remember when he lost his daughter? It's like, no, nah, yeah, remember I that forgot. <laughs> yeah, if you remember it, that's cool. If you don't, then it's kind of like, okay, you know, this, this guy just cares that much about her and at the same time, people are like, that's cool that you want to raise this girl as your daughter, but your last daughter couldn't fucking blow up shit with her mind, <laughs> you know? Yeah, there was a moment when she's doing that. I'm like, all right, I think you got to go. Yeah, yeah, you know. This, you, this ain't working out. <laughs> yeah, you know, and when, when she's like tearing up the fucking house all over temper tantrum, it's like, I, you know, that's, it's, that's, I love that they introduced this whole thing of we don't know how long this relationship, this bond can last realistically. Yeah, and that kind of felt like something from the 80s again with Carrie. It's like, I'm going to start flipping out on oh, you and yeah. you can't stop me. What's what's next, mom? Yeah. And you know, I, I and that girl is, is amazing. She's a she she's really she has to do the most complex range of emotions here. And and she uh and she's awesome. But I she think, talks now. And she yeah, she yeah. Can, and she talks now. Shit, she's so good. I think she can make her nose bleed on cue. I mean, you know, <laughs> like, I just, somebody give her some tissues. Like, just give her a pocket full of them because every time she uses her powers, the nose will start bleeding. I was like, you can clean that up. Oh, I know. Well, I it's know. not enough that that it bleeds, but after it's done, she doesn't immediately wipe. Yeah. Like, you know how, like, like as a human being, when you have something foreign on you, just even your own liquid, you can't help but have your hand go up and wipe it. Mm-hmm. And she'll just let it stay there for so long. Yeah, I'm just okay. like, like yeah. oh, yeah. somebody do something. She's metal as fuck. <laughs> you're leaving out one of one of the best characters coming back, uh, Crazy Winona. Yeah, the juice uh, is loose. Oh, was yeah. Yeah, like it's, it, I think it goes about two episodes of her just being like, "I'm straight Winona." Yes. But the second three kicks in, she's like, "Oh lord!" Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, "Oh yeah, she's I, back." I was so happy. Like when we were watching, it's like, man, she's a little too calm here. I miss mm-hmm. wild-eyed Crazy Winona Ryder. And then yeah, by episode three, mm-hmm. oh, oh, yeah, the store oh. was out of Christmas lights. Yeah. <laughs> but then once a new thing came up, <laughs> she got into a sun cocaine That's yeah, what it yeah. was. <laughs> there's a point where she's in a department store with sean ass it's like no don't leave her alone in there <laughs> oh yeah no it's uh you're looking at it and you're thinking like okay you know well that's really cool that she's kind of calmed down a little bit and then they start getting calls where you don't even see her doing it people are like man this bitch is calling the police department six times a day yeah mm-hmm. over nothing <laughs> like good lord please help yeah. me help yeah. me please <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, she's uh, she's in rare crazy form here. Oh yeah. yeah. The one thing that I did not like here, and let's 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 just talk about, let's talk about episode, let's talk about episode seven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the one. Uh, and yeah, and again, I'm sorry for having to switch between these tonight. I know these go these go a lot smoother, but we're about done here, and I had to just pull this up before we go, and that is. Episode seven is the one that stood out for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, yes. that is the one. Now, 
this is the one where I said, man, you were doing so well with these with the 80s theme. You were doing so well <laughs> with your nostalgia. You were keeping it in check. You were pulling back. You were showing some love until you introduced those goddamn street punks from a Ninja Turtle cartoon. Uh, those, those, those Jules Sch- Schumacher gang members. Yeah, the, yeah, like, it was this, yeah, like everything is like this one looks like Batman and Rocky. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Looks like did, did Joel Schumacher direct this episode because... Or Escape from New York. Yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, Joel Schumacher, man, because everything looks like a, everything looks like a, a like a bowl of cereal. Everything is like bright. Everything is fluorescent. Well, it looks like they would be like uh, brought in by the foot in the Ninja Turtle movie. Like, yeah. sleep, sleep in this junkyard really quick. They li- their lair looks like a kid show where they have break dancing. You know what? Yeah. Where it's like, you know what? What says the street? Graffiti. <laughs> Cardboard. You know, uh, they got that thing where Eleven had to get to their lair. She has to go through a, 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 a an alley where uh, they got um. these bums who talk to themselves around <laughs> barrels of fire with fangles <laughs> Gloves, the Robocop like, extras. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Like everyone's crackheads and homeless people in this part of the city. And yeah. it's and it's so it's so bad. This this episode. It, I mean, it's not weak. It's bad. Yeah. This thing stands out so much from everything that they've done before. Well, well, well. Plus the the story is reaching like it's got so much momentum at this point. <clears throat> yeah. With everything else, and it's like we stop our usually scheduled program to bring you this, and you're like, well, okay, and then you're like. I could have lived completely without that. I, it, it, you could have it, told me in ten minutes and what the, what happened here, and we could have gone on with everything. It adds else. a little something to just a little something to uh, to what they're doing because they they do have a story, and it's good it's good to get away from the creatures and the the, the monster story that's happening and get into this whole thing with uh, with these characters going back to the the scientific experiments, and this kind of feeds into that, but not in a good way. I've killed. Did they? deserve it they hurt me Come. i like that setup right there where they were getting into like uh the other people that were experimenting on which is what one of these characters uh is and i you know i, I like that they were trying to do something and at that point right there i could get i could i was starting to overlook a lot of the stereotypical punk rock things that they were doing mm. but that episode, it just, it had, uh, without spoiling anything, it not only had that cliche in there, but a few others. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this yeah. is the weakest written episode that they've had yeah. for everything that was yeah. so inspired before. I hated that episode. It, it actually brought this down a, a grade for me because it just, it, it really, it, it was, it was on such a good roll. And then that stopped right there. I'm like, oh, okay, a little something different. I'm like, damn. I you, would know, you say, kind of took me out. I would say the episode wasn't bad. It just didn't fit the whole thing that they had going mm-hmm. on. I feel like I would, I would say like what Martin said, like going one through six, you had this great tight story. Everything was hitting its marks. And then this just stops and it seems like a failed X-Men pilot. Uh, I like, <laughs> yeah, it really does. Yeah. And, and the thing is like they, they do things in here that it, it pertains to the story. But again, it could have been done and probably just written in or even said in like a phone conversation, like 10 or five minutes in another episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I did like some of the things that they did in here when they showed up. Uh, a lot, a lot of the, the the special effects, especially during the the climax of, at yeah. the end of that episode, yeah. I was like, okay, th- that part was really cool, but it doesn't fit this whole Stranger Things universe that you're building. Yeah. You know, that's the thing too. It's like I hate when you have these street punks and they talk about how broke they are, have to how they have to commit crime. One dude talking about, man, I can't keep eating this garbage right here, and it's like, but you can go out and buy product to make your mohawk stand uh-huh. up real nice and straight. Hey, priorities, man. Yeah, yeah, okay. He's pain and <laughs> he's, hunger. He's eating his hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I, you know, to wrap it up, I like, I do like this better than Stranger Things. I, and I like Stranger Things a lot. Don't get me wrong. I think Stranger Things is a is, is a great series. You know, there were some things that uh, in that one, as I mentioned, nostalgia mainly that made me say that too in love with this, and it, and it stands out to me. It was almost like a big full price, but it was knocking on the door of that. And this one, I got to bring back down to a matinee also, just for that one episode, and also <coughs> because because that, it's almost like they swap places. Like there were certain things that I liked about the first one that uh, I don't like here that they're doing and uh, that writing was awful and also as I told you they do something I hate they, that they do this with creatures and aliens I'm just going to say this real quick uh, without spoiling anything but I'll just uh, I'll say two words hive mind I think that, sure. that is such a shortcut and I've told you before I don't like that and it looked like they introduced that here and uh, you know that's, that's just kind of a cop out these days so like the first Stranger Things uh, I, there's a lot that I love here and I wish I could give it more but I, I'm going to kind of stick with uh, what I gave the last one, an extremely high matinee. Uh, 
uh, what you guys think? Okay. But then to keep in mind that episode nine might just be like, whoa, shit. Um, I think all the characters did a great job. Um, I I enjoyed the fact that they threw in uh, um, the, the 80s nostalgia, but actually made it work within the story where it didn't feel like it was crowbarred in there. And I liked that they, uh, they did a lot more with the effects and, and did spend more time in the upside down and t- decided to keep the tone a little bit more serious in this one, uh, but still had enough brevity in there to make it be a fun adventure for kids. This was a great Great, great, great season of Stranger Things for me. This is better than sex. Okay. All right, then. You know better than sex means flawless. No, I don't think so. That, that, that's your definition. No, not, 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 well, I created that rating, so <laughs> you know, <laughs> people have to go by that. He really means a full price, but we'll let him keep it. <laughs> but hey, hey. I found it more emotional than the first season. I found it scarier than the first season. You joke about the final episode, but I think the final episode has a, a real fitting emotional conclusion to it that okay. really brought it home for me. So for me, it's a full price. Well, you know what? I'm going to pull my rating out then and just not say anything. I'm going to say, <laughs> well, I, I'm not being fair. I'm not being fair. You know, I'm just going to I'm going to say it's leaning towards a matinee. Uh, but until I see it, I'm not going to give like a hard, a hard line re, uh, rating right there. That, you know, I'm being fair. That's fair, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, mine. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, episode seven is bad, but I don't think enough to pull it down a whole rating point. Mm-hmm. And for the first three episodes, I was just kind of liking it, but just not in love. Mm-hmm. It's just <clears throat> after that, about the fourth episode, everything really started to kick in. And as Gertz brought up, it started to get scary. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's some of those yeah. episodes here that are way scarier than, than anything that's been done in the, in the, in the other ones. And I'm going to tell you suspenseful scary, too. Yes. Yeah. Like, you yes. up there rooting for people. Run, motherfucker! Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so this, this ends up being where so, sort of the first half I liked less than the first season, and the second half I liked better, uh, you know, taking out this, the seventh episode, which would make it eight. So it averages out to being a full price for me. All right, then. All right. You know, I'm on the and I do want to watch the last episode. I'm dying to see it. I was wanting to see it tonight, but I was practically out of town driving back in. So, you know, I'm going to. I'm going to reserve my full rating, but I'll, I'll report to you tomorrow and tell you what I feel about that. You nah, know? we'll be over it by then. Who yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cares what you think? Everybody throwing tomatoes at me. <laughs> <laughs> the full price. <laughs> sure. I'm about to catch. Shout out. Just finished watching the last episode. Full price.